Hi everyone, welcome to my first Patreon video and I want to start off saying thank you so much for uh, supporting me, uh, it means the world to me. But let's get right into it. Today I'm going to show you how I got this painting of the stoat. I'm mostly going to focus on the sketching process, so let's get right to it. Okay, so I open Photoshop and I create a canvas um, uh, the size that I want my painting to be and then I create some space around it where I can place my reference photos. When choosing reference photos, I try to grab uh, different angles and poses uh, of the animal because I don't want to take one reference photo and uh, draw it exactly as it is. I try to mix them in my mind and having different angles helps to create your own image. And with starting the sketch you might have noticed that I tr I'm trying to create like the flow of the pose. Um, stoats have this really cool like flexible wiggly body and I really wanted to uh, capture that movement and that flexibility. Uh, so that's why I'm starting with these S shapes. Establishing the line of movement is a great way to create a more dynamic pose and a great way to base the rest of, of the pose off as well. While working for paintings for conventions, I've had to find ways to be able to streamline my process a bit more. And I noticed that I was spending a lot, a lot of time during the sketching process I would keep working on a sketch that was pretty much like unsalvageable and it would be better just to start over but because I already spent so much time on it I would just continue to linger and waste even more time. So I decided for me personally it would just be a lot easier to do the sketches digitally and make use of those great tools that digital programs offer you. Grab things with the lasso tool, make them bigger and smaller as you can see here. I can mirror it so that I can see the proportions better. And I'm also not afraid to make mistakes because once you make mistakes and you notice them that's when you can do something about it. So making mistakes is good, <laughs> don't worry about it. But your sketch will eventually get to a stage where you have more difficult anatomical problems that you need to solve. And as you can see here, I'm kind of struggling with the pause. So I just looked up some more reference photos where you can see the pause a bit better and go from there. Some of you guys might be wondering, Lisbeth, why for your first Patreon video are you painting a stoat, otherwise known as an ermine, otherwise known as a long-tailed weasel? Well, I'll tell you. Last year I went to the Ardennes with some friends to camp and we were camping next to this little stream and I was just enjoying nature and I saw this little flash of red and I was like, what's that? So I looked a little bit closer and I saw this little stoat and it had this cute wiggly body and it just kept hopping up and down and I thought this is just the cutest thing ever, I need to paint that. And the fox gloves were also in bloom, so that just really reminds me of that vacation. So I thought I would add this to the painting as well. Fox gloves have very long stems, so I thought that would be great to mirror the dynamic pose of the stoat. And putting different elements of the sketch on different layers in Photoshop, it makes it a lot easier to move things around to create balance in the composition. I know there's always a lot going on in my illustrations, so I really try to focus on readability and balance so that you can still see what's going on. And I do that by looking at the spaces in between the elements, so like where the flowers are, that they're not too close to the head of the stove so that there's some breathing room. I'm not gonna lie though, it is something that I really struggle with, especially when I start painting. I'm always catching myself adding too much detail because I just want to render things and make things pretty. I guess it's a kind of like a putting the effort in type of thing. While the truth is that if you detail the areas that you want to be the focal point, uh, it'll be a lot nicer of an image to look at. So for me, that often means that I spend a few hours on a certain part of the painting and then realizing, wait, this wasn't supposed to be this detailed and then I just go over it with a color wash to tone it down. I try to be very self-aware of my weaknesses and address those while sketching because in the sketching process you can do whatever, you can fall on your face. I mean, no one is watching, right? <laughs> Unless you're making a video about your sketching process. <laughs> so you might have noticed that I'm starting to slow down a bit in the sketching phase. I'm just rendering things, fixing things. It is kind of a pitfall of using different references and mashing them together. Uh, you really need to start figuring out how things actually work. 
I'm still struggling with those damn paws and I just keep selecting them and changing them and <laughs> it would have been so much easier if I actually found a proper reference photo and drawn ex exactly but I've noticed with myself that when I use those type of reference photos the image ends up really stiff and sometimes I just spend hours and hours like looking online, looking on Pinterest just to find the perfect reference photo and then you end up not finding anything. The best thing of course is to always make your own reference photos, but I realize it's a little bit hard to go to a stoat and be like, hey, can you stand exactly like this? No, with your paw like that. No, no, a little bit up, up, no, yeah. <laughs> As a general rule of thumb, I'm always just like, would this animal be able to stand up and walk and not fall over or not trip? So yes, then you're good to go. <laughs> During this sketching process, I want to make all of my creative decisions because that saves a lot of time when I eventually start painting. Once you've transferred your sketch to the canvas and you start working with actual paint, it starts getting a lot more difficult to make major changes in your design. For example, if halfway through you all of a sudden realize that, oh, where these flowers are is really not working or it's really affecting the readability, it's a lot more difficult to move it over a few centimeters than when you're still in the sketch phase, you can just grab the lasso tool and resize or tilt things a bit. Also, when it comes to colors, of course, as you can see here, I'm trying to come up with a color palette. So once I'm painting, I don't think halfway, oh, the flower should have been orange instead of pink. Though even with all my preparation, once I'm painting, I always notice things that I'm like, Oh man, I should have done that differently, but you know, that happens. At that point, I just decide to keep going and with my next painting, I try to reflect on my last, try to think about what went wrong and what I would do differently and just apply it to the next painting. Okay, and we are done with the sketch. Time to print it out and to transfer it onto the canvas. I will be sharing my transfer method and how I actually paint my paintings in a different video. So for now, I'm just going to tell you cool facts about the stoat. To start, stoats are small carnivorous animals part of the weasel family. They live in Europe, North America, Asia, and were introduced to hunt down rabbits in New Zealand in the 19th century, and now they are a real little pest for all the native birds over there. And what's cool for all you Dutchies to know is that the word stoat is actually derived from the Dutch word stout, which means bold or naughty. <sighs> I think they're pretty naughty looking, don't you think? They love living in woodland areas, shrubs and marshes and are very good at climbing trees to get the baby birds and eggs out of the nests. Stoats are nocturnal and like to eat mice, foals, lemmings, but they can also hunt down prey much larger than themselves such as squirrels and rabbits. And after a long night of hunting, they like to retreat in their burrows. But they didn't dig those burrows themselves, they stole them from other animals, probably the ones they used for their prey. Very naughty indeed. <laughs> What's really cool is that in the summer their coats are brown with a white underbelly, but in the winter they turn white, except for the black tip on their tail. Unfortunately, because of that, they have been used for their fur. You've probably seen them on portraits of royalty with the white fur and the black little tassel things, that's ermine fur. And just like how I saw them in the Ardennes, they have a very stealthy, hopping-like way of moving around. They are very flexible, very lithe, and just super cute. And at this point, I've finished the painting. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, it's not completely how I envisioned it, but I love how sometimes things turn out not as you plan them and you end up liking it in the end. It's pretty cool. And there you have it, how I made this one. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and I'll see you next month. Bye.